Thank you. So bad, but Hallelujah. No mumi go ke mo dupe. Hallelujah. No mumi go ke ni nuwe wo. Hallelujah. No mumi go ke ma wo salo. Hallelujah.
Yan se vi yon lan roba Woni kule fosi Amo were 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 Baba, 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 mi se Woni la yen si ya won Woni kule fosi Amo were were the vibes coming off stage next to have uh, the opening prayer will be the first lady of Babcock University Professor Grace Tayo for the opening prayer good evening Babcock please let's remain standing as we pray Heavenly Father ancient of days the I am that I am the creator of heaven and heart. We bless your name this evening. We give you glory, we give you honor and adoration because you have counted us among the living today. We thank you for the opportunity to come together after quite some time due to coronavirus, but you have made it possible for us to come together this time around to praise you and to thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for how far you have led us since the beginning of this year, since January to this point in time. We thank you because you have counted us among the living. Father, take all the glory in Jesus' name. This evening, we have come to praise you. We have come to offer thanksgiving, and we have come to thank you for Jesus Christ that you gave for us as a gift. And so, Father, we invite your presence in our midst. We pray that your Holy Spirit will dwell with us, that our prayers, our songs, our adoration will be acceptable unto you. Now, at the time we are living here, we will all count ourselves to have been blessed. We thank you, Father, because we know you will do more than we can ask for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Sanchez. Good evening, Babcock University. My name is Chaplain Anu, and with me here is Chaplain Temi. We are so honored to be on the stage today, and I can tell you this feels like a dream. What do you have to say, Chaplain Temi? My sister, it's really a dream come true. Exactly, a dream come true. As we know, tonight is the night called Feast of Light, and we've been encouraged to spread love to everyone around us. Now, spreading love in terms of giving gifts, gift cards, pleasantries, and word of affirmation. So that is why we are here. We are here to actually appreciate some certain people for what they've done for Babcock University as a whole. Firstly, I would like to appreciate the administrative department. Thank you for your effortless planning day and night to ensure the school is what it is today. I would like to give a shout out to our president and vice chancellor, Professor Ademola Tayo. Thank you so much, sir, and may the Lord strengthen you and every other member in the administrative team. I'd like to say a very big thank you to the staff and faculty. I would like to show a deep appreciation and also for your support and contribution with everyone in the school. We would like to say a very wonderful thank you with the deepest of our art. I would like to say a shout out to Dr. Ajibade and Mrs. Ajayo Woye and other staffs and faculties. Okay, so I would like to say a very big shout out to Buta. Thank you for hearing the views of the students and not just hearing the views, but ensuring they are put in the center and making sure their views and their reviews are being acted upon. I'd like to say a shout out to the very own president, Ayobami, the vice president, Olamide, and every other Busa officials. I would like to say a very big thank you to the cost reps for being very diligent, passionate, and also being an intermediary between the lecturers and the students, and also being so diligent in the sense that they will be able to support our needs and also being able to stand by us in time of troubles and our challenges. I would like to say a shout out to Mimi aka Miracle and also Timmy, Okwe and Faidat. Okay, so I would like to say a shout out to the pastoral team and chaplains as well. Thank you so much for being there when we needed you. Thank you for putting down your listening ears, not just being able to connect with us, but being able to connect to the parents and staff as well. I would like to say a very big shout out to our very own Pastor Debo Adesoya, Pastor J.A.F. Adeot, Madam Iman, and also Chaplain Abolari. I'd like to say a very big thank you to the medical support team, the nurses and the doctors for being able to take care of our medical health facilities. And also I'd like to say a very big shout out to Dr. Adebawajo, Dr. Chukuma and Dr. Adetayo. And I'd also like to say a very big thank you to Babcock University Staff School, Babcock University High School for being able to support us throughout our stay here and also being able to support us and also help us in the future of bringing in future supposes, um, purposes of our stay here. And also I would like to say a very big thank you to Dr. Adeba Wajo and also Mr. Moniru. Finally, this won't be complete without saying a very big thank you to the students of Babcock University. Thank you for choosing Babcock as your very choice of study, and thank you for being here, because without you, Babcock will exist. I would like to also thank my classmates, my friends, my roommates, Rachel, Simi, Ebere, Dami, Esther, everybody that we, I cannot mention tonight. Thank you so much, and I would like to say this month is a month whereby we are asked to spread love, so we should not get tired of spreading love and we should what keep keep spreading love, spreading love and remain and blessed tuned. thank you so much Babcock University the voices you've heard happen to be student media chaplain of division of spiritual life Babcock University can we put our hands together for them once again 
we've expressed love and it's time to demonstrate love. And so we want to celebrate everybody sit seated here this evening. If you are born in the month of January, we have a cake for you. If you are born in the month of February, we have one for you. If you are born in the month of March, we have one for you. April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and I, December, hallelujah. So we have 12 cakes here. I want to appreciate Busa and everybody for the provision of this. So Lasha will be the one to give the command. We have representatives of this birth month. And so let your spirit be connected to ours as we pray and cut this cake. Shall we bow our heads as we pray? Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the birthdays of this wonderful, precious, promising student, staff, and faculty, and Babcock leaders. We pray, O oh Lord, that the purpose you have for them in the land of the living will be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. That each time they are celebrating their birthday, it will be with joy, with gladness. That by your grace, our students will become nation movers, world achievers in the name of Jesus. As we continue this demonstration of love, we pray, O oh Lord, that hatred we give way for love in the name of Jesus. Fear, we give way for faith to pass our examinations in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. In Christ's name, we are prayed. So at the count of three, we are to spell love. Three, two, one. L O V E, love. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting right now, Unity Chorale.
And coming on next is the Chastity segment with Dr. Okonkwo and company. Good evening, everybody. This is the Chastity Program, and I have here with me Mr. Kolapo Adekoya. Mr. Kolapo Adekoya is a counseling psychologist, substance abuse counselor, marriage and family life practitioner. He is the principal counseling consultant at KP Consulting Counseling Clinic, a counseling clinic with its based, a counseling clinic based in Ibadan, Nigeria. He belongs to many professional bodies that time will not permit me to mention. He's a therapist, premarital counselor, and all that. Mr. Kolabo is a man that is versatile. Mr. Kolabo has authored many books, namely Effective Study Habits, Career Album, Memory Reading and Remembering Books. Mr. Kolabo is a seasoned counselor. He worked with us here in Babcock when we had Bueb. Babcock University Academic Empowerment Program. If he didn't work well with us, Mr. Kalapo will not be here today. Because he worked well and departed well, that's why we remembered him and invited him as our guest this evening to speak on chastity. He's going to cover managing our sexuality and ideal relationships. I have the privilege and singular honor to invite Mr. Kolapo to speak to us. Welcome. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody. I want to thank God for this opportunity that I have to share with us uh, briefly on uh, chastity. And uh, I'm really happy coming back to uh, Babcock University. I enjoyed my stay here in Babcock. And all of the things Dr. Okonko was reading about me, I can say that uh, some of those foundations were laid while I was working at uh, Babcock University during the, uh, uh, the web program. And I want to really give thanks to God and appreciate God for that. All protocols duly observed. I want to be sharing with us briefly on chastity. And I'm going to really focus on managing your sexuality and ideal relationship as a young person. One of the things that I promised myself that I'm going to do here today is not to, not to convince us about anything, but just to share with you and trust that the Holy Spirit will work on your heart. Because some of the things that surround chastity, you know, handling your sexuality properly are things that majority of us already know as young people. But the truth stands that our society is obsessed with a lot of things that spur people into sex and sexual acts. If we go out on the street, you have the nude pictures, you know, pornography pictures on our billboards. Even on the internet, there are loads and loads of reels, you know, short videos that you watch that spur people into sex and sexual acts. And the truth is that there are so many people that are battling with this issue. But for us as young people who have a future ahead of us, you need to harm yourself with this fact that 
you cannot go in the same direction that the society is leading us to go into. Chastity is the state of refraining from premarital or extramarital sexual intercourse, especially in this kind of hookup culture that we are. And our society we know is a society that really lacks sexual integrity. And that's the kind of society that we are in today. You know, for uh, those of you undergraduates who are here, you know, I, I normally say to young people that we grew up at a time when we are limited to three television stations. And if I can take you through that journey, a lead to three television stations, they don't open station until 4 p.m. Before 4 p.m., what you see is this uh, mighty rushing wind. About five minutes to four, you see this uh, color rainbow showing to you that the, 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 the program is about starting. When it is 4 p.m., they sing the national anthem, they say the pledge, and they roll out the program that they are going to have from that 4 p.m. till like 11.30. When it is 11.30, what happens again? They shut down. They sing the national anthem again, and they say everybody go and sleep until maybe Friday that they run some programs into the midnight. That was how we grew up. You know, it's such at a time for somebody like me when you will have somebody outside trying to turn the antenna, and somebody inside is saying, yes, it is clear. Oh, it's not clear again, you know. But it is not the same today and you have to know it. The, we have access to the internet. We have access to a lot of things. Not everything that is placed on that platform are actually for our good. As God is there controlling the affairs of things there, the devil is also there on the internet, on that same platform, putting different things that will destroy the life of people. You have to make up your mind. You have to decide on what and what do you want. Don't forget, I have told you that this society that we are in is such that lacks sexual integrity. Chastity is not a teeth gritting ability just to avoid violating the sexual rules, but a habit, listen to this, a habit of reverence for oneself and others that enables us to use our sexual powers intelligently in the pursuit of human flourishing and happiness to such a point that, yes, I talked about managing your sexuality. It's already yours. Don't forget, the Bible made us to understand, and it's very clear that the thief cometh not. He has this three mission agenda to kill, to steal, and to destroy. You have to make up your mind that you are not going to be one of those people that will fall into the trap of the enemy. So, chastity describes that ability to use your sexual powers intelligently in the pursuit of human flourishing and happiness. That the things that you are doing is not something that will affect other people negatively. It's not something that, you are, that is also going to affect you negatively. One of the challenges that we have is that we see few examples of people living chastely. And so we end up despising the ideal and following the norms in the society. What is the norm in the society? It's such a society where you just want to be in so that you will not be the prude in the group. It's such a society where you are afraid of pressures that are coming from your friends. The truth stands that it is not everybody that are doing it because that's one of the lies that young people share with themselves that everybody is doing it. Everybody is doing it. So I want to join so that I will not be the prude in the group. I don't want to be the odd one out. But that's from the pit of hell. That's a statement from the pit of hell. So we call chastity oppressive and naive. We lack the strength in ourselves and having little community support to obtain the ideal we desire and we end up presenting it. So the fact that we don't have too many examples around does not mean that there is nobody around you who is leading this chaste life. 
if you search inwardly, you discover that we have a lot of people that God is also helping. See those people and use them as an example, not those people that have decided to put down the law of God and go in the way that they want to go. Listen to this quote. When you decide to lead a clean life, that is when you decide to keep yourself pure, chastity will not be a burden on you. It will actually be a crown of triumph. And there are fundamental things that you need to know about um, sex and sexuality. Because some of the things in my work as with young people, even when I run therapy sessions for people that are already addicted to either pornography or masturbation or some kind of uh, funny things, you know, that we see flying all around. One simple thing is that you see some who are not educated enough. You see some who have just decided to follow the myths about sex and sexuality around. You see some who are not even conscious. You see some who have not even decided to remain chaste. One of the things that you would do to yourself is not to leave it to chances. Make a decision about your sexuality. There are so many young people today, and some of you are here. The reason why you are not yet sexually active is because it has just not happened. It is not because you have made a decision that you are going to remain chaste. It's not, a it's not because you have made a decision that you will lead that kind of life until you get married. It's just because it has not happened by chance. Choice is very important. Decision is very important. When you make decision about your sexuality, chances are that when opposing factors come, the power of decision will rise, and you will just tell yourself that I have made a decision that I am not going to do this again. One thing you need to know, in fact, a number of things, is that sex is the most important thing in life is not sex. Like so many people used to say that, okay, you know, I've not done it, I've not tested it. You know, as a young person, you have a responsibility to handle properly, to manage your sexuality. It is yours. God gave you, made you a custodian over that. So you have a responsibility because you are going to be accountable to God. There is nothing to lose for not having sex sincerely as a young person. Because that's one of the lies that is going out today. And so many young people are buying into it. I've had to speak with young people, you know, during therapy session. Who you you know at times when they when they talk about because most of the times I normally drive them to tell me their stories. How did this actually start? You discover that it's just because they don't know some simple, simple things that they are supposed to know. So lack of sex doesn't affect the fulfillment of purpose in life. That you're not doing it does not mean that you will not be a fulfilled person. Okay, sex without a discovery of purpose amounts to futility. So there are some things that are even more important in life that should be a driving force to you as a young person. God has never, and listen to this, God has never killed any man for not having sex. Okay, God has never killed any man. In fact, God is happy when you remain chaste, when you undo your sexuality, properly and you do it the way God actually wants you to do it. I will be closing and I will say this to you, that there are some facts that you need to know about yourself. And that's, those are some of the things that young people don't know. In fact, we have loads and loads of young people, adolescent, transiting to adulthood, that Nobody has ever shared things with you about your sex and sexuality, and you are just growing. And some of the things that you know about it, you just pick it from your friends. One thing you need to understand is this, that as adolescents, during puberty, when you experience the highest growth rate, your reproductive organs become mature and functional. Two things. There are physiological changes and there are also psychological changes that takes place. So some of those things that we experience, they are natural. You know, some young people will say, you see, I can't just control my urge. 
And I also tell them during therapy session or when I'm facilitating a session like this, have you ever seen somebody that is so thirsty and you are saying that I'm thirsty and the only water that is available for you around that time is the one that you can get from the gutter? What are you going to do? You are going to control that thirst until you get to a drinkable water because that power is in you to control. But there are some other things that you pay attention to that you do from time to time that also breaks down that willpower, that breaks down the power to be able to control your emotions. When you give yourself to watch a lot of things that you know within, in fact, your conscience is telling you. In fact, the Holy Spirit is talking to you. In fact, your mind, you say it, your mind is telling you, shut it down, shut it down. And you just tell yourself, let me just watch this one more. You are programming yourself for something that you may not be able to handle eventually. So there are physiological changes and there are psychological changes. Unfortunately, in school, what they talk to us about most of the time are the physiological changes that you begin to grow pubic hair and hair in the armpit and all of that. They don't talk to us about the psychological changes. Some of the feelings that you begin to have, how do you manage that? How do you control that? I trust that the Holy Spirit will help each and every one of you in the name of Jesus. Like I said, it's not a lengthy thing, but just to call your attention to the fact that there's something that God is expecting from you, and that is to remain chaste. May God help you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And I want us to go with this. God has never killed any man for not having sex. Remember this quotation? When you decide to lead a clean life, chastity will not be a burden on you. Rather, it will be a crown of triumph. God bless you. Thank you very much, Chesity. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we begin to unravel the story of the birth of Jesus Christ. Please follow closely, CWC. Darkness necessitates the need for light. Light, a beaming source of hope, inspiration and guide to an expected future. Welcome to the 2022 Fist of Light. Tonight, these light bearers will be sharing the best of the best light with you through drama, singing, narration, and prayer. Mr. Isaac Oshintade, Classic World Concepts, Jane Eddy, B2B Kids, Timothy Waranja, Angel Ngwaogugu, The Cord, Unity Choral, Ebuluwa Uluwa Rinu, Dr. Uduak Etiewo, Exeos Choir, The University Pastor and the Vice Chancellor. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. 
was in the beginning with God. All things came into being by him, and apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. In him was life, and life was the light of men. The world God created was good, beautiful, and perfect. The sun that brightens the day, the moon that gives the night its color, the cheaping birds, the creature that makes the sea glide with beautiful waves, and the man and his helper, Adam and Eve. of the beautiful perfect nature was soon smeared with a choice a choice to be or not to be to love or not the master creator to listen or turn deaf ears to the teachings of God God was benevolent to place Adam and Eve in a perfect garden but his love was reciprocated with a choice that upturned the beautiful garden. A choice to taste evil, to sin against God.
The fall of man brought hardship, pestilence, and sorrow to the once perfect world. Who speaks for the bitter world? Who will stand for us? The earth needed saving from evil. A savior to redeem us. Only the one without blemish can save us. Jesus Christ, the Son of Man. Every day they pass me by I can see it in their eyes Empty people filled with care Yet at who knows where On they go through private pain Living fear silent cries only Jesus hears people need the Lord people need the Lord at the end of broken dreams he's the open are called to take his life to a world where wrong seems right oh I could be too great a cost for sharing life with one who's lost through his love our hearts can feel all the griefs they of life only we can share
that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Thank you. Thank you. B2B kids. Thank you. From the time the promise was given in Genesis, God's people watched and looked for the coming of their king, their savior. From Noah to Abraham, to Moses, to Isaiah. And then one night, the promise came in the form of a baby. The stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared. And the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices. For yonder breaks a new and glorious morning. Christ was born, oh night, divine, oh night, oh night, To love one another, his law is love, and his God's well is peace. Chains shall he break, for the slave is our brother, and in his name all of 
oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise me. Let all within us praise His holy name. Fall on your knees, oh He. was born oh night divine I know night oh night divine And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was the governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because it was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Hallelujah. All right. Hello. Two, two.
Mary, oh Mary, oh Mary, oh Mary, oh Mary, Mary. The Virgin Mary had a baby boy. The boy came from the glorious kingdom. The angels sang at his birth. The wise men could tell of his glory. The stars spoke of his grace. The wind from the south, north, east, and west spiraled telling of his might. Jesus, the Son of God, born of a Virgin Mary. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his kingdom and peace there shall be no end, upon the throne of David, and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this
In the same region, shepherds were staying out in the fields and keeping watch at night over their flock. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said, Don't be afraid, for behold, I come to proclaim good news of great joy that is to come to all the people. Today, a savior, who is Messiah the Lord, was born for you in the city of David. This will be the sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in cloth and lying in a feeding trough. Suddenly, the host of heaven with the angel, and they proclaimed, praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those who he favors. Good evening, everyone. We'll be singing together now as a choir. All of us will sing together uh, the hymn, While Shepherds Watch Their Flocks by Night. It will be, it will be projected, you'll find the, the lyrics, will be, you'll find the lyrics on the screen, and so you can sing along as we praise God together. The first verse, we'll all sing together. And then the second verse, the ladies will sing. The third verse, the men will sing. The fourth verse, the women will sing again. And then in the fifth verse, the men will sing. And the finally, to end it, we'll all sing together the last verse. While shepherds watch their flocks by night. <laughs>
words which dear thoughts by heart and seated on the ground. The angel of the Lord came down and glory shone around. So we're going to dance a little bit this evening. So please, put on your dancing shoes and please dance with us. We know that Jesus Christ is the King of Kings. And so we are here to tell him. We are here to reaffirm that this evening. So please, join us. And these songs are very easy. You can learn them and you can dance with us. Thank you very much. Hallelujah, ha, ha. 
University High School Choir.
Our next reading is taken from the book of Luke, Luke chapter 2, verse 15. Luke chapter 2, verse 15, and it says, So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. Oh, 
Otto. We are the children of Babcock University Star School. The title of our song is Betty Lehem. Adizi.
Our next Bible reading is taken from the book of Luke chapter 2, from verse 16 down to 20. Luke chapter 2, 16 down to 20. They ran to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. Then the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherds' story were astonished. But Mary quietly treasured these things in her heart and thought about them. Then the shepherds went back to their fields and flocks, glorifying and praising God for what the angels had told them. And because they had seen the child, just as the angel has said. That was Elda Ishaya Zakaria. Thank you so much. Coming up stage is Zina Okoro Raymond featuring Asius with a song, You Raised Me Up. Yeah, yeah. Hello, hello. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man.
Aleluia! Alô, alô. Sound, we need a lead guitar on the sound, please. We need an acoustic guitar on the sound. Let's 
relationship can't stop you now. We'll give God the glory all the day. Feast of light, feast of love, feast of kindness, feast of renewal. We praise the name of the Lord that this past three years, there was something like a stopgap, and now we can experience this. I'd like to say again that this is feast of sharing. At this moment, we praise the name of the Lord that we can be counted among the living. We are going to take offering at this time. We want to help somebody out there who is in need. I want the ushers to be ready as we take offering for some of us who are not privileged as we are. We have some indigent students among us we also have some of us who probably at this moment are in the hospital because of health challenges. I would like to say, as we reach out to these needed ones, the Lord will bless you. For the Bible says it is more blessed to give than to receive. Are we ready to help somebody out there now? Are the ushers ready? And before they go out to collect the offering, I would like us to bow our heads just for one minute to pray so that whatever we are going to give out at this time, we re, uh, meet a need. Shall we bow our heads while we pray? Holy Father, as we want to give a happy hand to somebody, we pray that the offering we are going to collect now we go a long way, even to help the needy among us. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us, because we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, why? Let's do the offering. Let's collect it. I hope the ushers are doing that right now. The music is going on. The offering can still be going on. God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, the beautiful, thrilling, well-decorated soldiers of the cross. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, right. please may welcome AYM District Youth Choir.
is not bad. And so at this point, we will take the congregational hymn, Joy to the World, after which we will have or take an address from the President, Vice Chancellor of Babcock University, Professor Ademola Stephen Tayo. 
and he will also be conducting the candle lighting. Please listen to this announcement. Please, everyone is to remain seated at the end of the program. You will be ushered out in an orderly manner, church by church. This is to avoid a stampede. This is to avoid a stampede. Babcock University loves you. Thank you. Good evening, Babcock. I can hear you. Good evening, Babcock. I'm so excited today because we could not have this Feast of Light 2020 2021 because of COVID 19. Today, we are celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's a season of love, season of giving, season of sharing, season when light overcame darkness, season when joy broke through the facade of sadness, season when love overcame hatred. 
Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, light has come to the world and darkness we have to give way. And we're going to do that symbolically today. As a community of faith, I want to thank God for what the Lord has done for us the past 11 months. As we face the last days of this year, it's my prayer that our good Lord will see us through. For you, my dear students, as you go to your exam hall, as from Monday, the Lord will surprise you. Those of you in B's, you go to A's. Those of you in C's, you go to A's. And all of us will rejoice together. So at this moment, I want to invite up forward those that have been giving candles. And then we will put off the light for a moment while we will lit our candle. In usual years, we normally have candle distributed all over. But we have discovered that we use this candle to hurt one another. And so tonight, we are going to use the torchlight on our phones. And then we are going to bath the whole stadium with the light of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So please, those with candle, please come forward. And those in charge of electricity, please come forward. Please, those and in the light, we want it to be dark a little bit so that we can have this light lit. And all of us now we use our light and then we sing a song which will symbolize what we are trying to say. Thank you very much. Where is the, I want the match so that I can lead this candle. Brother Aladdin, please, I want you to sing a song related to light. No touch light, no. Where, where, um, where is the lighter? Yes. 
our Father and our God, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, we thank you very much for tonight. Thank you very much for rekindling our hope in you, our God. For 4,000 years, the whole world was shrouded in darkness. But at the fullness of time, Christ came to dispel darkness. He brought light to our world. And for the past 2,000 years, we have been basking in the light of the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we join the whole world in celebrating the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray that Christ will be reborn in our hearts. We will live for Jesus for the rest of our lives. Are there some that are in a state of sorrow at this time? May you dispel the sorrow with your joy from heaven above. Are there some lonely? Are there some sick? Are there some that are suffering from hatred, bigotry, and all kinds of sufferings? The Prince of Peace has come to the world to dispel all these ills that are the devil our world. Our prayer tonight, Lord, is that we receive the Prince of Peace into our hearts and our life will take a new turn. Tonight, I pray especially, Lord, for our final year students. This will be the last Feast of Light before they will leave us for good. It's my prayer tonight that we exit from this campus gloriously. You will not be left behind. You will be out there conquering and conquering. The Lord will make his face to shine upon you. It shall be well with you. For those that are in the lower levels, the Lord will make your time to come and it's going to be in a big way. We will celebrate you. Thank you for all those that have been involved in the planning of this program. It shall be well with you. Come Monday, the returning students, the old students will begin their exams. We pray that the exam of this semester will be extraordinary. All our students will make it. You will triumph. Those courses that are very difficult, the Lord will make it simple for you. We will not experience examination misconduct. We pray especially, Lord, for our country. It's not the best of times. Banditry, kidnapping, inflation, and all kinds of things that make our hearts to shudder. In the midst of all this, we pray that you make a hedge of protection around all of us, that all of us will be back here in January to celebrate your goodness. We pray for our parents, we pray for faculty and staff, the entire Babcock University community. It shall be well with every one of us. Thank you for this celebration. The Lord will continue to bless all of us. Thank you once again for Jesus, the reason for this hour. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. we expect everyone to put on the light on your handset to the name of God the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit let everyone seated here tonight we want to see the light of the world thank you so much 
and God bless you. So we praise in the name of the Lord. on your handset you are doing it so that God's light will shine in your life God will give you light and you will not stumble wherever you go the light of God will lead you and you will never stumble do not want stampede to happen. Therefore, when we be exiting, let us exit in an orderly manner. And the Lord will bless every one of us together. Thank you. God bless you all. Looking for its owner, please come see uh, Pastor Babalola. He's on a brown caftan. Yes, at the back of the podium. Please, if you have seen a lost phone, do well to return it. Thank you. Hello. There is a missing 
item here from uh, Ifai Ine. Please come to the podium and get it. ATM. I ATM card, please come. Talifisha Kawira. Just at so be. Send it for send it. Talifisha Kawira. At so be. Do you, Lord Baba, be your 